بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم ربنا لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nourish and cherish and sustain of all the world choices blessings and salutations upon his beloved Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent with this most complete and perfect deen of Islam we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his infinite mercy accept our efforts insha'Allah we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these difficult times uh, uh, grant shifa to our to those amongst us who are ill to grant ease during this time of um, this pandemic and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow this period to have been or to serve as a lesson for us so that inshallah when we come out on the other side that we are more aware of our relationship with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ultimately that our meeting with Him is not too, 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 too far away and having come to that realization, inshallah, we should improve ourselves, our ways, and we realize how, how much we need to ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our shortcomings, and that He grant us strength to overcome the challenges that the future may hold for us. Just a brief talk um, for today's Jumu'ah, insha'Allah. I would like to read a few verses from the Qur'an. And before I do this, I would, um, and, then, and then perhaps go through what it means um, according to the, to the Mufassireen as well as what it means to us perhaps in today's day and age ultimately when we read the quran we've got to read it as if though it is as relevant to us today as it was to our fathers last year and to their fathers the year before that ultimately as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his sahaba ikram read the quran and found it relevant to their time as well but before I get to that, let me explain why I am uh, speaking about these ayah and perhaps it will give us some context. Post Ramadan, or well during the last few days of Ramadan, as we do these years almost always, we find a difference in opinion amongst the ulama regarding the sighting of the moon and the general public because of social media because of technology being so easily available tend to get involved in these discussions and while that may not always be the worst thing or may not be a negative thing what happens is that there are certain etiquettes and understandings that even the ulama sometimes miss and especially amongst the awam or on social media amongst the general public on social media whether it be their twitter accounts or facebook or instagram or whatsapp whatever the platform is we tend to take it as a place where we can vent our emotions, vent our opinions, and perhaps because we don't see the immediate repercussions, we feel more 
free to be able to express this irrespective of the consequences and the outcomes. To share our opinions and to differ with people in sometimes ways that are ugly, ways that are not befitting for the Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so I thought it important to speak about it. And unfortunately, sometimes even in the ranks of the ulama, they are using the differences to garner some kind of support amongst those that support them or to take the opportunity to label and to criticize unfairly so those who have an alternate opinion to their own for sometimes an agenda that is not even serving the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as general public we need to be aware that we cannot allow our emotions to become so involved so we cannot become so blinded by our emotion where we join those amongst us that are, are perhaps taking this opportunity and uh, 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 looking at it with ulterior motives. So the first point I want to bring across is that there needs to be the practicing of adab al-ikhtilaf or adab al-ikhtilaf, the etiquette of differing with one another. Islam, under all circumstances, allows us to differ with one another. Under all circumstances, it allows us to share our opinions and to have those opinions heard and to have those opinions considered and to have those opinions uh, even practiced at times. But those opinions also have the right to go under scrutiny. They also have the right to be criticized. They also have the right to be rejected by others. And the fact that we are Islam is a religion that allows people and its followers to, to question and to ask and to understand, by all means, our diversity and our diverse views, ways, mannerisms, colors, ethnicities, this all should contribute to our strength rather than contribute to our weakness. Because by having so many Muslims see things from so many different angles, we should be able to cater for a solution that is all-encompassing. We should be able to cater for a response that is, is, is well-considered, well-rounded. But if we are not going to see our diversity and our differences as a strength, then we will use the opportunity to further uh, divide this ummah, to create dissension, hatred and animosity within the ummah. Something that I'm certain we all are aware Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be pleased with on the day of Qiyamah. Likewise, not only the issue of the moon, when it came to the issue of reopening or closing the masajid, when it came to the issue of reopening the masajid, there are some masajid that have taken the step to open and there are those that have remained because of certain uh, requirements that needed to be met and they were unable to meet those requirements. Um, and so they or they have taken the decision that they would like to remain closed for safety reasons. So the difference, now people go out on social media and they start questioning what kind of Muslims are those? What kind of committee is that? What kind of an imam is that? Who are we to question when someone has a legitimate difference of opinion? And how dare we get into the idea of spreading fitna amongst ourselves? Now, this idea of fitna is something that I would like to focus on in today's discussion, inshallah. So, the ayah I've chosen from the Quran relates exactly to that. And perhaps by the end of this small talk, we will have a better understanding of what fitna means to us and what it is in our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and our minds and grant us the understanding insha'Allah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ 
ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين سبحان الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says and fight in the path in the way of Allah سبحانه وتعالى الذين يقاتلونكم those that fight against you in other words you have the permission to defend yourself ولا تعتدوا so you have the permission to defend yourself to retaliate but Allah سبحانه وتعالى says ولا تعتدوا what does that mean ولا تعتدوا Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying but do not transgress do not go beyond what is the limit of Allah سبحانه وتعالى now Islam has very strict limits on how we can retaliate and respond to an aggression against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا Do not transgress those limits. So we know when we come to the fiqh of, of, of warfare and so on, that Muslims are not allowed to attack the elderly, the women, the children, and so on, the disabled, and, and, and places of worship, and, and so on and so forth. So the Quran, for example, gives us this and says, "Wala ta'atadu." That when you when you retaliate, don't the, the retaliation should be proportionate to what the ag initial aggression was. So if someone, while Islam is not saying to us, "Look, turn your left cheek so that someone can slap you again," it gives you permission to defend yourself. But if someone comes along and bumps you by mistake. And you said, what did you bump me now? And you all of a sudden bring a gun and want to want to kill him or take his life. Then the response is not proportionate. So Islam is saying, Wala ta'atadu. Don't go into this disproportionate section. Don't go beyond what is allowed. Just you are allowed to retaliate within reason, that which is a permissi permissible uh, in Islam. Inna Allah la yuhibbul mu'atadeen. And obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who transgress the limit or go beyond the bounds. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ That you are allowed to fight them wherever you find them. وَأَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَخْرَجُوكُمْ And you are allowed to dispel them and take them out from where they've taken you out. Obviously this was a time of jihad when Muslims were fighting for their lands back. They were fighting for the return of their lands. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Muslims, when they took you out of your homes unfairly and unjustly, you are allowed to retaliate now and go and take take them out from the places whence they took you out from. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the important part I want to highlight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ And fitna is worse, is worse than murder. Fitna, الْفِتْنَةُ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ That fitna is worse than murder. وَلَا تُقَاتِلُوهُمْ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ حَتَّى يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِيهِ And do not attack them and fight them uh, in, the sanct in the sanctuary or in the, the sacred place of Masjid al-Haram حَتَّى يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ until they fight you. In other words, you are permitted to defend yourself but you are not permitted to be an aggressor in that particular area. فَإِنْ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوهُمْ So if they fight you, then fight them back. كذلك جزاء الكافرين like that is the reward of those who have rejected Allah سبحانه وتعالى and then it says فإن انتهوا فإن الله لا غفور رحيم but if they desist if they uh, 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 stop their retaliation or if they stop the aggression against you فإن انتهوا فإن الله لا غفور رحيم and they want to come to you with forgiveness and they ask for forgiveness then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving and all merciful and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَاتِلُهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونُ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونُ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ and, uh, and, 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 and fight them uh, and fight them وَقَاتِلُهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونُ فِتْنَةٌ and fight them until a the point there is no more fitna وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ and that all the ways lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the deen is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِنْ إِنْتَهُوا فَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ and if they desist from that فَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ then there should be no enmity except upon those who continue to do oppression now why do I choose to mention this ayah very briefly mainly because of the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الْفِتْنَةُ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ that even in this context, you know, in Cape Town we have a common, the common use of the word fitna. When someone is backbiting, 
we say they are committing a fitna. When someone is, 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 is doing something mischievous, mischievous, then we say they are doing fitna. Why is that called a fitna? Fitna it refers to a test. Now, the word fatana, actually in Arabic, if we research it, it refers to a, 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 a process which a blacksmith <coughs> or a goldsmith or someone who's commonly busy with metals burns that metal to assess its quality, to assess its authenticity. And so when you burn gold down to see how much, <coughs> how authentic or how pure that gold is and the quality of that gold, then that is called fatana. So it's putting it through a rigorous test in order to assess its quality. And so when we refer to something as, 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 as a fitna, the way the word has come to become used is to be a test. And therefore we find that the Prophet ﷺ refers to many of the trials and tribulations that will come to us closer to the day of Qiyamah as a, as a, as a, as a fitna. The greatest fitna being a Dajjal, says the Prophet ﷺ. Why is it a, why is it a fitna? It's because if you pictured yourself to be a piece of metal and that was the fire that was supposed to assess how authentic and the, your quality and how authentic you are, <coughs> then by the appearance of Dajjal, it is such a huge fitna, it is such a huge test that it will distinguish those who have true Iman and those who lack true Iman. So that's why it is referred to as a fitna. And when our elders used to say, stop, stop doing fitna or uh, don't take part in fitna, then fitna was referred to, it's because your, it is a fitna for what? It is a fitna for your ears and a fitna for your tongue. In other words, what you are listening to is a test. Because so easily you can lose your iman by listening to something wrong or by uttering something wrong. So even that that you hear or that that you say can be such a huge test for your Iman that the elders would refer to that as a fitna. It would, it would determine whether you have true Iman or whether your Iman was weak. And so the word fitna comes as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of of those who backbite, in the form of those who, who do ghiba, in the form of jealousy, in the form of, of, of dajjal, in the form of other tests. The dunya, for example, is a huge fitna. It's a huge test for us. So all these tests and tribulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us is referred to as a fitna. Now we have a better understanding of what fitna means. But fitna in this ayah also refers to not only the fitna that we have to undergo, but the fitna that we cause for others. <clears throat> Do you understand? So if we are saying to people, or, or if we are the ones that are presenting a difficult situation for another Muslim to undergo, or putting him through a test where we are partaking in backbiting and we are expecting them to listen to our ghibah, <coughs> then technically we are putting them in a fitna, in a test, which they will have to pass. Now, why would we do that to another Muslim? Why would we deliberately put another Muslim through a fitna to make sure that they fail or to make sure that their life is difficult? That is extremely horrible and something that we cannot do as Muslims. So, because of this and because of this kind of test, <coughs> it is so unassuming. It is so sly, it is so stealthily done that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges the danger of fitna by saying Al-fitnatu ashaddu min al-qatr That fitna is worse than murder Because once you've murdered the person, it's finished You've committed the sin, you've taken a life, you've, it's as if though you've killed all of humanity or whatever But fitna <coughs> Fitna doesn't just harm the person and the person's life or the people around that, that person. The fitna has the potential to spread in a community like wildfire. And it is able to be a fitna for everybody. It's a test for everybody. Because we are naturally feeding into our egos. We feed into our egos and we feed into what we want must happen best. 
So this ayah when we hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at the context in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the aggression of the, the opposition of the adu of the of the adu of the of the of the enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of the aggression of those who have opposed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you can fight them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about fitna even in the context of jihad. And even in the context of jihad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Al-fitna to ashad min al-qatl. In other words, let's look at this ayah and then we will end this talk insha'Allah. Hopefully it's something for us to think about. To think about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاقْتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ تَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ And kill them wherever you find them. وَأَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَخْرَجُوكُمْ And take them out from where they've taken you out. وَالْفِتْنَةُ to ashad min al qatl So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is permitting them at times of war that you can retaliate and respond proportionately to what they have done to you. And the justification is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given وَالْفِتْنَةُ to ashad min al qatl that they are making fitna with you, they are putting you through difficulties and tests, and that is worse than murder, which you are permitted to do if they are attacking you. Do you understand? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is likening the issue of fitna to murder, fitna to fighting, fitna to attacking the, the, the person of a, uh, 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 the personality. And uh, sorry, not the person, the person, the, 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 the physical body of someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is likening it to that. Can we now understand the dangers that we are constantly involved in every day? We post willy-nilly when we oppose someone, when we create some kind of unnecessary thing in these Facebook groups and WhatsApp groups and, you know, we just go crazy. We create fitna for not only ourselves, our family, but for all the Muslims we have on WhatsApp, for all the Muslims we have on Facebook. We don't even give it a second thought. We pass a message on, we pass something through, we allow, we even uh, uh, initiate something and we criticize people and we are extremely negative. And we're creating a fitna for the next Muslim brother and the next Muslim sister. Remember something, before you pass something on, before you decide to propagate something, before you decide to send something forward, try and give it a second thought, insha'Allah. Try and consider and remember the ayah. These are just a few words. Al-fitnatu ashaddu min al-qatl. Just four. Al-fitnatu ashaddu min al-qatl. If we consider the al as a um, as part of the of qatl and of al-fitna, so th that's the definite um, pronoun. So the thing, uh, the, sorry, the definite article. Um, so the thing is, so when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says al-fitna to ashadu min al-qatl, let us remember uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Let us remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala before we commit fitna. Let us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we engage in this backbiting and jealousy and speaking about it and passing unnecessary useless information on. When we want to argue with someone, let's remember to keep our adab al-ikhtilaf. Let's keep a, the etiquette of disagreement with one another, inshallah. We can speak at length about the etiquette of, dis of, of, of disagreeing, adab al-ikhtilaf. We can see many examples by our illustrious <coughs> imams, the Sahaba Ikram, the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, when things had to be different. And uh, even amongst the, the scholars, we see beautiful examples. If only we can take heed and take lesson. Let's not spread fitna and be guilty of something that's worse than murder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, inshallah. Grant us the blessings and barakah of Jum'ah. Jum'ah mubarak to you all. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa ma alayya illa al-balaahu al-mubeen.